ChurchMilton.tv has learned that a Vatican power broker is threatening to sue a Catholic blogger for his opinions about the Synod on the Family, raising the troubling question, is the Vatican attempting to silence faithful Catholics? Hello and welcome to this special report from ChurchMilton.tv. Father Thomas Rosica, a spokesman for Pope Francis, is threatening to sue a Canadian blogger for his postings about Father Rosica's controversial opinions and actions about the upcoming Synod on the Family scheduled for October 2015. David Domet is the man behind the popular blog Vox Cantoris, where the blog postings were first published. Well, I received a letter uh, from a very powerful and prominent church official from the Vatican, uh, threatening me uh, with a lawsuit uh, if I do not remove from my blog, Vox Cantoris, uh, certain blog posts uh, referring uh, to this high-profile Vatican official. Domet sent the threatening letter, which came via email, to various friends and colleagues in Rome, the United States, and Canada, looking for advice. When I received this letter through email from this high-powered Vatican official, a very prominent and very powerful man, I was shocked. I was distressed from it. I couldn't believe that a cleric and a high-profile Vatican cleric would stoop to issue a lawsuit against a regular Catholic, a family man uh, who works in his spare time. I write a blog that a lot of people appreciate because of the issues uh, that I address. I love our Lord and Our Lady and the church that he gave us, and it pains me as I know it pains many Catholics, to see what's happening. And to receive such a letter from such a high-powered uh, church official is threatening. It's intimidating. It creates uh, concern about my security. I'd like to retire in a few years, and now I have this threat of a, of a lawsuit against me from a, a Vatican official. I, I can't believe it's happening. Church Militant has come into possession of the threatening letter from the Vatican spokesman through an anonymous third-party source. In it, Father Rosica's lawyers list 11 specific blog postings by Domet that Rosica is demanding be taken down or he will sue. All 11 involve various public comments and actions by Rosica that Domet says compromise Rosica. But since there is nothing reported of a personal or private nature regarding Father Rosica, and all Domet's comments are related to public actions and comments by Rosica related to either last year's Synod on the Family or this year's upcoming one, the question is now being asked, is the Vatican itself trying to intimidate small Catholic bloggers into silence in advance of the Synod? Father Rosica's boss is Holy See and Chief Papal Spokesman Father Federico Lombardi that one of his immediate underlings, who has such public identification with Pope Francis, would threaten to sue a Catholic blogger is raising alarms on both sides of the Atlantic. Did Father Lombardi know about Rosica's actions? Did Rosica, given his very public platform and position of influence in the Holy See and close association with Pope Francis, inform his bosses at the Vatican before going the legal route? If so, did they approve of suing a Catholic blogger? Does Pope Francis himself know anything about this? If not, was consideration given to how the Pope would react when he heard his spokesmen were suing Catholics for expressing their opinions? Pope Francis, recall, has asked for very wide public discussion on all these matters. He himself has initiated a call for public input. In the face of all of this, then, the most disturbing question of all would be, are officials in the Vatican itself resorting to complex legal schemes to frighten faithful Catholics into silence behind Pope Francis's back? It was faithful Catholics and faithful Catholic internet operations that blew the lid off the inside attack on church teaching 
by assorted cardinals and bishops at last October's synod. The presence of such vocal, independent Catholic media clearly caught the liberal progressive crowd off balance, and in the end, they had to dial back their efforts to introduce theologically deficient language about sodomy and adultery into the final document. But in the intervening months, it appears they have regrouped and have returned to the offensive. And many are beginning to wonder, are the actions of Father Rosica part of a stealth plan by others in the Vatican to try and derail the faithful opposition before they show up in Rome in force again in October? Stay tuned for more reports as developments continue to unfold. This is Michael Voris reporting for churchmilitant.tv in Detroit. God love you.